Hi everyone. Now we are going to discuss on the module 3, which is based on a three phase control rectifier phase. In the earlier module, we were discussing on single phase control rectifier phase. And we are using a three phase system in order to get a higher DC voltage, better input power factor, and less ripple current in the output. So we'll be able to get a better load performance. So the three phase converters basically it can be classified as halfway control rectifiers semi-converters, full converters, and dual converters. So in this, the three-phase halfway control rectifier and three-phase semi-converters, both are single quadrant operation. That is, voltage and current both will be positive. And three-phase full converter, it is a two quadrant operation. That is, the voltage can be positive and also negative. And three phase dual converter, it is a four quadrant operation where voltage can be positive or negative, and the current can also be positive or negative. And basically, the three phase half way control rectifier it is a three pulse converter, and three phase full converter it is a six pulse, and three phase dual converter it is a 12 pulse converter. And what are these pulses indicate we will be discussing in the further sections. So in this we will be discussing basically on three phase half way control rectifiers with resistive load, three phase semi converter and three phase full converter with RLE load and then three phase dual converter. Now we are going to discuss on three phase half way control rectifier with resistive load which is also known as a three pulse converter. So here we are having a midpoint configuration because all the phase CMOS have a common terminal which is considered to be the neutral point. And we have a delta star system and the star side we are having the three phases phase A, phase B and phase C which are connected to the three thyristors T1, T2 and T3. And all the cathodes of the thyristors are connected together to the point P and a load of resistance R is connected between the point P and the point N which is the neutral point. Now here we can observe that from the waveform, the input voltage waveform which is mentioned over here, you can see that the phase voltage VA is taken as the reference and VB is lagging behind 120 degree and again VC is again lagging at 120 degree with respect to the phase B. So we are having three phase voltages, phase A, voltage VA, then VB and then VC. The circuit is functioning in such a manner that only one SCR will be conducting at any given instant of time. That is the one which is connected to the phase having the highest instantaneous positive value will be conducting. Now we can observe it from the angle of omega t from 0 to 30 degrees. So during this time we can just observe that the VA is less positive when compared to the VC waveform, that is for the voltage VC. That means the thyristor which is connected to the phase C will be conducting till the point omega t equal to 30 degree where I can trigger on the thyristor which is connected to phase A that is T1. So that is just going to indicate that it is not possible to fire a thyristor at a phase angle less than 30 degree. So till 30 degree the thyristor T1 is reverse biased by the already conducting thyristor T3 which is connected to the phase C. So effectively we can say that for firing angle alpha equal to 0 degree the firing action will be happening at omega t is equal to pi by 6 which is nothing but 30 degree. Therefore, we can say that the firing angle alpha is measured from the crossover points of the voltage waveforms. So, therefore, we can also denote alpha equal to 0 degree for each of the thyristors T1, T2, and T3. So, therefore, which we will mark it over here. So, this is for alpha equal to 0 for thyristor T1, and this is for alpha equal to 0 for thyristor T2. And this is for alpha equal to 0 for thyristor T3. Now we are going to plot the output voltage waveform for alpha equal to 6, 0 degrees. 
So we have already told that the thyristor T1 is fired at an angle omega t equal to 30 degree for our firing angle to be zero. So that means the system is going to conduct from alpha from omega t equal to 30 degrees to omega t equal to 150 degrees. So that is from this particular instant to this particular instant the thyristor is going to conduct. So therefore you can say that the output voltage V0 will be following the curve like this from alpha equal to so T1 will be conducting from omega t is equal to 30 to 150 degree and at omega t equal to 150 degree I am going to fire the thyristor T2 I am going to fire the thyristor T2 so therefore the thyristor T2 will be conducting from omega t equal to 150 degree to till this point which is nothing but 270 degrees then at omega t equal to 270 degrees I am going to fire the thyristor T3 so when thyristor T3 is getting fired at omega t equal to 270 degree it is going to commutate the thyristor which is already conducting that is the thyristor T2 so therefore the output voltage will be coming across the point Vc from omega t equal to 270 degrees to Three ninety degrees. So that pulse will be repeating and you will be getting the output voltage like this for alpha equal to zero degrees. So here also you can also see that the thyristor how much time it will be conducting, you can just observe it from here. So this is for 120 degree, again 120 degrees again 120 degrees so the thyristor is conducting for 120 degrees and why this is known as a three pulse converter you can also just observe it here for a full period of time you can just it is 360 degrees so till this instant you can see that there are three pulses which is going to occur so this is one this is two and this is three and the half part is coming over here so therefore it is known as a three pulse converter so the 3-pulse converter you can also write it like this, it is 360 divided by 3 which will be getting it as 120 degrees, so 120 degrees is the conduction time and so it is known as a 3-pulse converter. Now we are going to discuss of a firing angle alpha which is less than 30 degrees. So we will be taking alpha equal to 50 degrees for an example. So therefore the firing will be happening at omega t is equal to 30 plus 15 that is 45 degrees so that instant of time which I am going to fire the thyristor is nothing but this particular instant so at 45 degrees or 30 plus 15 degrees I am going to fire the thyristor thyristor T1 so therefore the thyristor T1 is connected to the phase A and till the thyristor T1 is fired the previously conducting thyristor is nothing but the T3 which is connected to the phase C. So you will be getting an output voltage waveform like this till this particular point. And here I am going to find the thyristor T1 at omega T equal to 45 degrees which is corresponding to the firing angle alpha equal to 15 degrees. So therefore the output voltage rises to the waveform of VA and it will be conducting and it will be reaching at this point at omega t equal to 150 degrees so there the thyristor t2 is not at fired and therefore you will be getting your output voltage through this particular thyristor t1 because it still is it is in the conducting mode and it is getting fired at an angle alpha equal to 15 degrees that is at this instant so till then the output voltage will be coming through the thyristor T1 
and at this instant again the voltage increases and again at another delay angle of 15 degrees the waveform of voltage VC comes into picture and it repeats. So this is how the output voltage for alpha less than 30 degree comes into picture. Now we are going to find the analysis of firing angle alpha greater than 30 degrees. So for that we will be taking alpha equal to 60 degrees. So alpha equal to 60 is just going to indicate that I need to fire the thyristor at omega t equal to 30 plus 60 that is nothing but 90 degrees. So at 90 degrees, omega t equal 90 degrees, I am going to fire the thyristor T1. So that is at this instant I need to fire the thyristor T1. So till then another thyristor was conducting and that we will be discussing in the coming session. So at omega t equal to 90 degree, I am going to fire the thyristor and therefore the voltage rises to the VA waveform and it will be still conducting and while reaching at this particular instant at 150 degrees the thyristor T2 is not at fired and therefore the voltage is coming across the lot to the thyristor T1 so that it will be replicating the voltage waveform of VA and it will be reaching to a point which is referring to 180 degrees. So it is conducting from 90 to 180 degrees. Then since it is a resistive load, the current also comes to zero, voltage also comes to zero and starts to reverse bias and therefore the thyristor T1 gets commutated. And now the thyristor T2 is not at fired because the firing angle alpha is 60 degrees. So therefore from 180 degrees till the thyristor T2 is fired the output voltage will be zero. So at 210 degrees omega t equal to 210 degrees I am going to fire the thyristor T2. So therefore it will be going to the voltage waveform of Vb. It will be start conducting till here. It will be reaching to this particular point which is nothing but 300 degrees. So this is referring to the angle of 300 degrees and after that the thyristor T3 is fired at again a delay angle of alpha equal to 60 degrees. So from 300 degrees till the thyristor T3 is fired the output voltage will be zero because there is no conducting thyristors that is from this particular point. And at this instant I am again going to fire the thyristor T3 and therefore the output voltage will be coming across the point DC. So again it will be replicating the waveform of VA. So here also you can plot the output voltage and again here it is 0. So this is how we are going to plot the waveforms. So basically here you can see that there are two instances are there. One is a continuous conduction mode and another one is a discontinuous conduction mode. So when alpha is less than 30 degrees, it is a continuous conduction mode and alpha is greater than 30 degrees, it is going to be a discontinuous conduction mode. So here you can see that the voltage is zero for a certain period of time and since it is a resistive load the current will also be zero and therefore you are having a discontinuous conduction for alpha greater than 30 degrees and a continuous conduction for alpha less than 30 degrees. Now we will be going to with the uh, performance analysis of this thyristors. That is how we are going to calculate the average load output voltage for each values of firing angle that is alpha less than 30 degrees and alpha greater than 30 degrees.